Ephesians 6, starting at verse 10. If you have it, say, I got it. it. Say, go ahead and read. Finally, be strong in the Lord and the strength of his might. Put on the full arm of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full arm of God so that you will be able to resist in the evil day. And having done everything to stand firm, stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. The evil one, the evil one, the shield of faith. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the day, and we thank you for your awesomeness. We thank you for a newness, not only in our sanctuary, but in our spirit, Lord God. God, continue to shake us up. Continue to not let us get too settled in you. God, I praise you, and I thank you, and we love you. It's in your son Jesus' name that we do pray that as we get ready to go into this world, circumcise our ears that we may hear our hearts that we may receive and loose us to do your will. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I'm covered. covered. As we go into this text, y'all know we've been dealing with advancing the kingdom, but we've been talking about being all dressed up. And we've been dealing with the armor of God. And we walked through everything, oh, not everything, we walked through a lot of the pieces. We started out talking about, first of all, just standing. And sometimes we have to realize that we have to stand. So when you look at the book of Ephesians, and you look at it, it, it uh, as I talk in Bible study, make sure you try to come out to Bible study too. We go in much more in depth. Uh, it's, been, it's been good. People's lives have been changed by this message that we're teaching right now. But when you look at it, Ephesians, you can break it up into three sessions. You can break it up into the wealth of the believer. Amen? So he talks about what we have already in Christ. How many know that you're rich when you're in Christ? You got to start thinking spiritually on this stuff now. You got to already think about what you already have once you give your life to Christ. When you give your life to Christ, he downloaded everything you would ever need to accomplish this. Either, watch this, either he's lying or you lying. The Bible says in the first Peter, we have everything that it takes according to, for, for godliness. Amen? We have everything. Matter of fact, that's in First Peter. When he opens up in Ephesians, he comes and tells us, that we are already blessed in Christ Jesus. So here it is. I'm not trying to get blessed. I'm walking in who and what I already am and have. So you're searching for something that's already in your bank account. All you need to do is go and withdraw it. And so what happens is you, can, you, so, so what happens is you put blessed as something tangible. We're well, really in the blessing. You really can't see it originally, but you end up seeing the result. So watch this. The car, the house, or the favor is not the blessing. It's a result of the blessing. Amen. The blessing is an empowerment. So he puts his hand, the mere fact that his hand is on you means I can do it seemingly, abundantly, above all you can ask, wish, or think. I already got the blessing. I need to just walk out what I have. Amen? Amen. So watch this. It's like after a while, you don't Guess what? I don't keep tying Joshua's shoes. Why? Because he should be mature enough to know how to tie his shoes. The mere fact he got the shoes mean, guess what? That I love him anyway. But there's some things I'm not going to do for you that which you can do for yourself. So what we're trying to do is still wait for God to do something that he's already given power us to do. So guess what? I'm rich with that. And so what I understand is don't take rich always, like I say, in a materialistic way. Take it. I'm rich in my spirit. Prosperity, true prosperity, when you're talking about money, mental health, or whatever, starts on the inside. If it's not on the inside, it ain't going to come on the outside. And what happens is I have to understand what he's done in me so I can understand what can come out of me. Hear that again. What's in me got to come. See what this seeds go, it, seed is buried in the ground. You can't see it until it produces. And so when I realize what I have, why did it go to the part two, which is the walk of the believer? So I come back. I walk what I know I have. I walk out what I who who I am. You get what I'm saying? So when I it's a different way I walk when I know I got some money. 
Amen. Amen. Here's the issue sometimes. You can walk in arrogance because you forget that everything you have come from him. You ever met somebody just arrogant? How, how, how you, you, you try not to wish for their downfall, but you just like, the Bible say pride go before the church. Uh-huh. You ever met somebody arrogant and ugly? On the inside and the out. Jesus. You really have nothing to be arrogant about. Amen. All right, punch your hand toward me. Punch, punch your hand. Punch your hand. Punch your hand. Okay. Oh, they said that's true, Pastor. That's true. But why this? How much more? I said it for, for a shocking value. How much more they walking in confidence and here you go got everything according to life and godliness and you walking with your head down? Why walk with your head down when the king of kings and the Lord of lords has made a rich deposit within you? Why did he saved you even in your utmost sinful state? Why are you walking with your head down? Why are you still asleep, not going out to everything he's giving, giving us? Why do we do that? It's because what the enemy has come to do is to make you ignorant of everything and make you look more on the outside for external pleasure than really your intimate relationship with him. And so now my, so when I realize how I, what I have, my walk is a little different. And now I walk different. But then I must remember this, and this is what some of us is again, is that there's also warfare to believe them. There's a warfare, and so if you're going to go to war, you're going to have, have to have certain, you, certain utensils. That's why I just give you a little preview. And so first of all, since I know I'm in a war, then that means I can't back up, so he tells me to stand firm. There should be no backing up in where I'm going because I'm not giving up ground. I'm here to take ground. And when I have to understand I'm coming to take ground, then I'm called to do, a, to do certain things. How do you advance the kingdom if you don't realize what you have and who you are? And so as we go through all the injury, we get here today, and we talked about the loan bill. We talked about the, bless, the breastplate of righteousness. Your righteousness is a weapon. Last week, we talked about having your feet shod with the preparation of peace. And now today, we talk about uh, the shield of faith. The shield of faith. Faith can be an interesting thing, John, because what happens is we end up having faith in faith. And that ain't what faith, your faith is supposed to be in. You, you don't realize it's a subtle move because you keep, we keep saying, if I just only had enough faith, enough faith in what? Your faith must have an object. Why is this now? Let me read this. The massive shield of the Roman soldier rested on a small clip attached to his loin belt when, when not in use. Attached to this loin belt of truth, watch this, you gotta hear, hear everything, is the shield which is representative of faith. Your faith is attached to the word of God. Your, your, your faith is attached to the word of God. And what I want you to understand, this shield was massive. It wasn't no little, no little shield. There were two shields they had. There was a little wood one that they would have for pageantry. But then there was another one that was like four feet tall by two. So it was a four feet shield. So I want you to see four feet maybe something like right here. It's a big shield. So you you ain't dealing with no little thing right here. But here's the thing we do a lot of times. It said we, we have faith in faith and your faith is only as good as what it's plugged into. You ever plugged up a certain uh, you try to plug up your phone or your computer? Let's, let's go with your computer. You ever try to uh, particularly now with HPs and some and some uh, uh, Macs, the same plug, right? The same plug will go into the machine that can go into your iPhone. But if you try to charge your computer, will charge your phone. It said this don't have enough power. Maybe we don't. We're not operating enough power because our faith is in the wrong thing. So what we plugged into can't empower me. 
So, so watch this. My faith must be in something higher and wider and bigger and deeper than me. And so my faith in my faith can't be it. See, the word of God always points me back to Jesus. So if it's the shield of faith, then it, will, it should be really be the shield of Jesus. I told you the whole armor speaks of him anyway. And so watch this now. The Bible says faith is what? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And so now if I can hope for it, that means I can, I, can, I can have something to have faith for. So why did it say, without faith, it's impossible to do what? Please God. It said, he who comes to God must believe that he is. That, it was, see, see, that he is. So you can't, you can't go to God, have praying. You got to know that he is. He is what? The great I am. He is what? He is evident in you. Do you really have faith in God or do you have faith more in the circumstances you have? Is your faith in God or is your faith in your money? Is your faith in God or your faith in your degree? What really does your faith lies in? That's what you got to ask yourself. Is my faith really in God or is it in uh, the fact that I got three, four degrees? Is it in my job? What is your faith in, my people? Because at the end of the day, for those of us who don't really walk through something, you're going to have to have something when the job lay you off. You're going to have something when people walk out the door. You're going to have something when you got zero, not even zero, negative in your bank account. You're going to have to have faith that God going to see you through. Because anything that you got faith in, it, that outside of God, it becomes an idol. And he will snatch it from you. He said, I'm the Lord thy God. There will be no other before me. Where have you put your faith in? Oh, my God, we put our faith in everything. We put our faith in, in everything. We put our faith in our looks. We put our faith in our ability. But the truth of the matter is I wouldn't have the ability if he didn't gift it. He gifted it to me. And so what I am, I'm a good steward of what he gifted me to. He said he is a rewarder of those who diligently see him. Which means I can't halfway go for him. Do you have a thirst and a hunger? She said, uh, uh, those who thirst and hunger after righteousness shall be filled. Are you too full to seek for God? Maybe we don't got too full on ourselves. And we don't get up in the morning or in the evening looking for him no more. Because now everything is going all right. And I don't need to pray no more. I got the job now. I got the wife now. I ain't got to seek you no more. And he said, before I let you do that, I'll take some away. Watch this now. And so we go in Romans 10 and 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Don't look for points that you just better take some notes, amen, because I'm just flowing with this faith. So what this tells me is no word, no faith. Because I can't, what, what are you believing in? So, so what happens is I have to hear something to, to spark something. Tell us so why this, no word, no, word. no, faith. no faith. Why this, the word of God is central to everything in our life. Tell me, what are you believing in? What and who are you believing in? Because I can't have faith outside of the word of God. Not, not true faith. Not to where I'm going. So first of all, there's a saving faith, right? So, so, so faith, watch this, faith and the word of God are inseparable. They are the one between. Remember why the shield was buckled on, 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 the, on the belt. So why did, in order for me to have God faith, I must have God's word. If I don't have God's word, I can't have God type faith. He said, believe, believe these things, believe when you pray and you shall have them. My faith can't be shaken because I got too much uh, test, testing going on with him. He done proved himself to me. Has he proved himself to anybody in here? I'm talking about has he really proved himself to you? Have you been dying to, you, to your last and he just, something just showed up? Have you ever been to a point where your back was against the wall and you just really didn't know how and he showed up? But when he showed up, let me ask you something. Did you stay with him? Or is he I dream a genie? 
Do we use God only when we need him? Lord, I need you now. I'm sm you're smoking novel every three months. I need you now. You really need him every day. Amen? Amen. Watch this now. Faith is also a result of the word being imparted into us. So as a result, if, if you give yourself to Christ in here today, you have faith. So you're not trying to get anything. You have it. Let me shake your mind up today. I'm going I'm to I'm 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 mess with you a little bit today because I want you to see it. Because you keep trying to get something that you have. I keep, I'm going to reiterate that again. You have it. Because Romans 12 and 3 says this. For through the grace given to me, I say to, I, I say to everyone among you not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think as to have sound judgment. Watch this. As God has allowed to each a measure of faith. Matter of fact, God gave you the faith to have faith in him. So it's implanted in you. Hear me again. You have faith when you come to Christ. The issue is you don't exercise it. And what happens is when you don't exercise anything, it, it, with the word atrophy, you, see, you're weak in faith maybe because you haven't exercised it. See what it is? And what happens is because you want, we live a level code, on, a, a life on a level to where we just want to be comfortable, we have put ourselves in a situation to, be, to use our faith. And, 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 what, and what happens is when people walk out in great exploits, it's because they done, had, they done had experience with them. You can't get no playing time sitting on the bench. I have seen too many people in the coach call their number, they not go in and play. So why this? We all have, I don't know how many muscles in our body. I'm looking for somebody. I'm trying to see, I don't know if I can use you. So Matt look a little bit more in shape than me. Just a little bit. Matt and I had the same amount of muscles. Hit me, hit me. Matt had the same amount of muscles. Matt just work out more than I do. Matt is more disciplined with his eating awards than I am. Y'all trying to figure out where I'm going. Some people are more disciplined in their discipleship. They pray when they, when they, before trouble comes. So they're exercising their faith more. They don't have necessarily more. They're just in better fit, spiritual shape because they exercise spiritually more than you. So it's not that God is a, uh, is a, is, is a respect of persons. You, put, you get out what you put in. You can't be mad because somebody in shape and they way small and you sitting on the couch and on the couch in little Debbie's. <laughs> and spewing hate speech at them. And what happens is you we end up thinking, oh, they, they click it up. Like, no, you, you, we don't see you enough that, to ask you. Y'all quiet on me. It's okay. I'm gonna preach this faith anyway. So what happens is, I don't know, what this. I don't know what I have because I never tried it. I never tried to walk it out. And why this? When you do get tapped to walk it out, you don't show up. Or you show up and stop halfway through. So you can't be trusted. So you're only going to be so strong spiritually because you only work out so much spiritually. So the faith that I have is either going to grow or stay the same size based on how much I exercise it. Amen? Amen. So if I want to walk like a giant in the, in the spirit world, then I got to do some spiritual exercises. You can't fast only when the church calls a fast. 
You're going to have to have, you can't just say, you just can't read the, the, the scriptures only uh, one day a week and expect to walk big in your faith. And God gave you his faith, number one, to save you, but to also go and do kingdom work. Say faith. faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this now. Watch this. There's also, uh, he gave you fighting faith. And, and, and right here, 1 Timothy 1, 18 through 19 says this. This command I entrust to you, Timothy, my son, in accordance with the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you fight the good fight. Watch this. Keeping faith and good conscience, which some have rejected and suffered shipwreck in regard to their faith. So that's fighting faith. And so they're saying that every word that's spoken over your life, you're going to have to have keep the faith to see that word come to pass. It ain't just going to happen. You're going to have to get up and you're going to have to, you know what? Because guess what? The enemy is coming. Doubt is coming. Every word that's over your life. Let me tell you this right here. You can, you, every believer should have a promise of God that they're standing on. That's in the word of God. You can't be a person of faith and not have spiritual goals. Watch this. Because if you're spending time with him, he's going to download something in your spirit that you necessarily can't see how it's going to happen and you're going to have to necessarily trust him. If, it, it, if you're not putting no trust in him, then guess what? what it, that ain't from God, because guess what? You're going to have to have something that you're going to have to say, if it, God won't help me do it, it won't get done. Your vision will always be bigger than your budget. Y'all better get this. I, I ain't trying to make you holler or nothing today. Your, the, the vision that God gives you will always be bigger than what's in your pocket. If it's in your pocket, it ain't from him. If your vision only has you involved in it, that ain't God. That's selfish ambition. Anything big that you're going to have to carry, you either going to have to be a part of it yourself or, or, or either you're going to have to recruit somebody to help you do it. And everybody ain't going to be the one doing the recruit. You're going to have to say, this is a big enough vision for me to join. I see where I add in that. The problem is nobody wants to submit and walk with every, somebody every now and then. You're going to have to lock hands with different people and say, I can't do this. Let me tell you something. It ain't going to just take church, boy, church people to do what God has given us to do in, in my heart. It's going to take dope boys and everybody. We're just going to have to get them redeemed on the way. Y'all better hear me now. The kingdom going to lead the way, but we're going to have to get everybody. We're going to have to go and tell everybody, look at him now, look at him. We understand you just don't bring that over here when we're doing it. But they're going to have to tell you everybody to do to clean up the heat communities. Amen? Amen? See, you can't advance the kingdom only with church people. You, you advance it through the church, but they're going to take everybody. Advancing the kingdom means getting them saved. It ain't swapping members. See, you want, you want people to come in that's already ready. That ain't true faith. Anybody can work with them. See, you, your phone from the start blowing back up. Because there's going to be people coming through the door that other people ain't They're going to be so uncool. So you want people already ready and made. Where they do that at? You better think about how ratchet you were when you came through the door. See, it takes faith to walk with people and see, they, see them come through the end. Anybody can walk away from people. You're going to take some real faith. You're going to have to look into people to see what God has put in them, and you're going to have to be patient enough to walk with them until it come out of them. You're going to have to sit there and pray sometime, amen? See, we want people coming in already ready to make. No, it's going to be some sisters, but come in here straight with skirts up, and you just sit them on the back road, sit them back there behind by coal, amen? They gonna come. You can't. She know better. She don't know better. She just came out the street and said, "This is a church, and I'm looking for something today." Ain't nobody gonna know better. Your faith. It 
ain't not going to take none of the SSI faith who come in here with people all dressed up, already ready. I'm talking about when you're talking about giving this word, you got to trust the word and not the emotions every now and then. I got to have enough faith to just trust teaching every now and then. I can't come in here and get you crunk. You got to get your mind ready for what God is getting ready to do. Tell somebody, I, wanna, I came to get edified, not entertained. Sometimes you just got to walk heaven and teach and get gone about your business. We ain't got no faith for it because we already want it ready. And you don't know what it is until you have to lay down in your face with your arms stretched out and say, God, if you don't do it, it can't be done. Have you ever been brought to that point? You done did everything you know to do. You done talked to him. You done did everything. Yes. Lord, if you don't do it, yes. it can't be done. Yes. I'm pretty sure that's some basketball player that get. Lord, if you don't do it, uh -huh. it ain't. This boy thought he league material. Lord, show him oh, sure. that he just going to get him a four-year degree. Jesus. <laughs> I'm talking about real faith here. I'm talking about super faith. That covers you. Here's the thing about the faith. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Darius. Our faith also protects us. This is what I want you to get right here. It says, the faith which is able to extinguish the fiery darts. Fiery darts. What's, what's interesting is this. See, you... We can get more accomplished together than you can by yourself. What you saying, Pastor? On these shields, there was a hinge on the end of them. So they could stand side by side and they locked up. See, away with all this individualism in the church right about now. My blessing. Your blessing, my breakthrough. I ain't gonna give with that. Guess what? It, I got this saying: If I'm gonna eat, my team got to eat. Yes. I might not be able to give them much. I gotta give them a little twenty third dollars every now and then. Take somebody out to lunch every now and then. Tell them you appreciate them, amen. So what they would do is stand side by side and link up, and they would advance together. And what happens is when they advance together. When they advanced together, it was hard to impenetrate the wall. The reason why we're not advancing because we're not linked up. But well, some of us. If we link up, we can take more territory. Amen. It, it, whoever saw 300? You ever saw 300? You saw 300? Remember when they had the shields? And they shot the arrows? And what that? Because everybody had the shield up and protected each other. They was up under the shields laughing. See, that's what I let you know right now. There's no such thing as isolation in the body of Christ. Maybe you're getting hit because you ain't linked up with nobody. Not telling you every now and then you can't go get your go get a little reprieve. But see what I did. What the enemy wants to do is get you off by yourself. And you were never meant to walk Christianity or life out by yourself. And guess what? I need your shield just like you need my shield. The Bible say one can put a thousand to flight, flight. Two can put ten thousand to flight. Matter of fact, come to say you are in the body of Christ, which tells me I'm supposed to fit somewhere. God is not using this language just to be talking. He is trying to let you know if you're not connected nowhere, you disjointed. You are out of order when you ain't connected to a local assembly. Because when, when I'm in the assembly, I can call the, the, the intercessors and say, pray for me. Let me give you this prime example. I'm, I, I got to straighten this too, right? Because I'm, I'm going to try to find this number code. I get a, a, a cash out request this morning, Jai. $20. Little dude, I get a train. I don't mind. It's $20. I ain't, I ain't bothering, but I don't bother. You know what I'm saying? I'm bothering for $20. Amen. <laughs> I ain't talking to the dude in about a year. See, you had been keeping up, keeping in with me, the $20 would have been sent. I'm waiting to see him. See, what you do, what we do is automatically say, I thought they were the church. We haven't seen you. It's tough. I mean, we in this flag. We're going to do what we got to do, but what you have you put in? 
Y'all quiet on me. Don't get quiet on me now. See, you expecting something from the body, but you're not participating in the body. The Bible say every joint supply. That's why they saw on the song the knee bone connected to the hip bone, the hip bone connected. Why? Because everything is connected. Let this knee bone get out of place. You're going to be hurting and walking like this. Because ain't neck wide. You out of place. You have something I need and I have something you need. Why? But when our faith links up, it's like the Wonder Twins. Y'all old enough to remember the Wonder Twins? Don't worry about it. I understand you don't. <laughs> wonder Twins, people, raise your hand. Let me see who know the Wonder Twins. Oh, Jesus, have mercy on my soul. It's Superman them. And so they would say, one of the twins, activate. I can't believe right now I'm explaining the one of the twins. Doing the sermon. I got to update all my, uh, what do you call it? I got to update all, all, my, all my illustrations. So let me tell you the one of the twins. The one of the twins would say that the issue would come up, John, it would say, we need to be an elephant or something, or we need to be whatever. One of the twins, shake your hand out. Transform into an eagle. I turn into an eagle. Then, boom, you turn into whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to be. I go fly be the eagle, you go do whatever. But the only way our power works is when we connect it. Maybe there's no true faith power because that's a lack of connection. Lord, help me to connect with the right person, the right people. I heard somebody say, I probably should have said Power Rangers. Okay. Go, go, Power Ranger. Okay. Y'all got Power Ranger then, all right? Tran or Lightning, whatever. Red Ninja, whatever. All right. Huh? Oh, I, I don't know. What I do know is that this faith got to get somewhere though. Mm -hmm. And so why is this though? It says, whereby I will be able to extinguish or quench the fiery darts. It brings me back now into realization that I'm at war. Here's the thing. You might not realize you're at war, but there are bombs going off. And there are dead bodies laying around. So you can walk through here like you're not at war. But the truth of the matter is, there's a war going on. There's a war going on for the soul, the minds, and the souls of men. And some of us in here may be wounded and not even realize it. And some of us are wounded and we realize but won't get the help that we need. And here you go. What they would do, there were three kind of darts. Coach, there were three kind of darts. That was a regular dart that you would, or an arrow that you would pull back and boom, it would hit you, it just wound you. There was another one that had fire on it. You could see the fire. And there was one more that, that it, it burst on contact. Notice this, he just didn't say the regular arrow, he said fire, which tells me the enemy just don't want to wound you. He wants to burn everything up in your life. He wants to burn it. He don't want just you to be wounded. Because see, what happens is the wound, he can drag, you can drag off and get ready and get back right. And here's the thing. Sometimes along this way, we may be wounded. But when you're wounded, you got to go somewhere and let God heal you. You got to go let God heal you because guess what? You're getting healed to go right back into the battle. But we here, here's why we can't be wound, we can't be healed, because we won't sit still long enough. We won't let him put a, put his hands on us. Or we won't we won't go nowhere into well in the body of believers where we can trust people and say, hey, pray for me with this right here. I'm dealing. It's like this. It's easy to talk about people until you get wounded. It's easy to talk about people until you don't drop the ball. Now you got now you gotta be showing that same mercy. See, it said that those, uh, to the merciful, he will show mercy. 
then you'll get that grace. But here's the thing. What are the places that he's trying to blow up in your life? What is he trying to do? Here's, here's one that God gave me, three to five areas. Number one, he's trying to burn up your prayer life. He's shooting at your prayer life. He want to he blow it up. Number two, your singleness. He wants you to think your, that your singleness is not worth it. That because you're single, nobody don't want you and all that. But God, what God is saying is glorify me in your singleness. You got time to worship me now. You can write the book that I want to give you. You can get your healing before you get with somebody else and have to deal with their baggage too. So glorify me in your singleness. He want to blow up your marriage. He want to just burn it up. Well, he wants you to think that they, people over there, they looking so good. You don't, you won't hear no conversation in their house. They put on the front sometimes. Matter of fact, they, they walking out this marriage by faith. Amen. Amen. I ain't speaking negative of marriage. What I'm saying is he want to burn it up. Why? Because he know that marriage represents the kingdom. Amen. What else is he, he trying to do? He trying to burn up your, 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 your prosperous mentality. So in other words, he wants to give you a scarcity mentality. So watch this. He don't want you to be generous. He wants you to think that you got to hold something back, not knowing that you can't get no seed if you don't sow no seed. Yeah. Your hand too clenched, so ain't nothing going out. So get what can't nothing come in. So why this? Let us take away the scarce, the scarcity mentality. There's plenty of no. It just needs to be a transfer. Amen? Amen. Let me tell you something. I believe the word of God, and if He said I give seed to the soul, that means I'm gonna keep sowing so I can get more seed. Why? Because I got, I know my mission to do is to advance the kingdom. I don't know about y'all, me and Chan got this thing. So I want to be on the other side of the check. Jesus. What that mean? I want to write the check. So y'all trying to get them. I want to write the check and help somebody. Change your mindset. The Bible says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Lord, make me a giver. When the last time that been your prayer? Jesus. Make me a giver, Lord. I ain't going to get on that right now. I'm going to talk about advancing through kingdom economics later on. But our mind got to change. I'm blessed. Look what I got. Well, he said you blessed when you give. Let's change our mind. Say, raise your hand with me. Say, I want to be on the other side of the chick. I want to be on the other side. I want to be on the other side. I don't know about you. I want to send some kids to college. Come on now. I want to, I want to, I want to pay somebody to mortgage y'all. Huh? I want it when they win. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. I don't know about y'all. See, that's what I want. I want to get on the other side of the chick. I want to, I want to be the lender and not the borrower. Yeah. I'm t I don't know about y'all. I'm tired of looking at my bills and being like, look at here now. Come on now. Is anybody with me on this right here now? Yeah. I ain't trying to just hoard it all. God, I want you to know you can trust me to give it. If you give it to me, Lord, I'll bless somebody with it. Yeah. You can either be the man with the sauce or the man with the pitcher. And I want to be the man with the picture because I want to serve. Yeah. How may I serve you today? Because guess what? If I got the picture, I can blow, I can pour my own cup too. Yeah. That's y'all got to look at. You worried about pouring somebody else's cup, but if I got enough for me and you, we both can drink. Yeah. Your faith, he is attacking our faith and he's burning it up. Why? Because we're not in this word of God. Here it is, I go, but this is what I do. You got to take care of your faith. You got to shield it. Give me a little minute, Jay. Everything you give to God, you got to take care of it. The shield was made out of wood, but it was overlaid in leather. And the way you protected in wood, Weston, was this. Wood by itself would rot if you soaked it. That's why I had to have the leather over it. So the only way you're going to distinguish it is that it had to be somewhere. So what the soldier would do was soak the leather in wood. I mean, soak the leather, soak the leather, the leather in water, excuse me. He would soak the leather in water. But every day he would oil it up. He would soak the leather and water. And every day, 
he would oil it up. Some by water and oil. They say it don't mix, but it make a good combination. You got to get this now. Because it says sanctify by the washing of the word. Oil is the anointing. My faith is not being protected because I'm not soaking enough in the word and I'm not soaking enough in the anointing of God. And the only way I'm going to extinguish, see, see what this is not that the arrows are not going to be fired. What it lets me know, what is it even lets me know that is that my, my shield going to be hit sometime. Because it wouldn't say it if it, if it wasn't going to extinguish it. <laughs> well, see, you, you, worrying about, you worrying about getting hit. Do what you can do and soak. Soak in the word. Soak in prayer. Because when I'm soaking in, I'm come out and I understand what I got. And maybe our shields are getting burnt up because we're not doing no soaking. Maybe, I'm not talking about you now, I'm not talking about you. Maybe I'm too much rushing in and out of prayer and I ain't did no soaking. Maybe, I did, maybe you don't lay in the word enough. And so guess what? We can't go to the word to get a promise from God. I don't have a word from God. I don't prompt because I'm not soaking in it. I'm not up on the, the presence of the Holy Ghost enough to stir me up. See, if you're going to be a good soldier, you've got to take care of your equipment. You, you, can't, you can't be a good soldier and not take care of your equipment. So one, if it say above all taking up the shield of faith, it don't mean that the shield of faith is, is more important than everything. It means your faith leads the way. So if I'm going to take any type of territory, corporately, let's talk about corporately, all of us got to have our shield ready. And I need you, my brother and my sister, to take care of your faith. I need you when you're away from the church to be in your word. I need you when you're away from the church to have, be on your faith praying. Life is going to come. But guess what? I need you to block out time at least 30 minutes a day to say I got to get before the Lord right here. I need you to get on Facebook every now and then and get on your face and get in his book. I need you sometimes you to sit in solitude and let God deal with you. Because guess what? We got land to take. And if you ain't ready to take the land, I don't want to see you. I don't want to see you die. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking about a physical one. I'm talking about a spiritual. I want to see you wounded. I'm depending on you to stand on that line with me side by side with our shields locked. Lord, help me to soak. Lord, if I got time on Thursday from 12 to 1 p.m., let me just stop by the church. If it ain't but 15 to 20 minutes, just to sit down in your presence. Lord, just help me to soak. Matter of fact, Lord, help me to get here. I know Sister Jerry and, and, and may be praying a little loud, but guess what? Help me to soak when I get here. And that's all good. Help me to soak in their in they prayer. Let me, hear, let, me, let me get encouraged by their prayer. Help me to soak. I'm too busy, God. I'm too busy. So get what? My faith is not one because get what? I have nothing to stand up with what my grandmama told me. But the Bible says your word. The word is eternal. And I ask you this. Are you truly covered? Go ahead, Jay. Are you truly covered? I knew the day wasn't going to be all rousy, but I want to get this to you. Lord, build up my faith. But watch this. The only way I'm going to build it up is to exercise it myself. Lord, don't let my phone be the first thing I look at in the morning. If it is the first thing I look at, let it be you, a you version of Bible app. 
Let me not worry about the likes I got on the post I put before I went to bed. Let me show up on my knees. Let me walk to my living room in the morning, Lord God. Uh, Lord, I know I can pray in the bed, but let me get up out the bed to come meet you. Sure, I can get up out the bed just to go sit on the couch. Let me soak in this word here for a minute, because I got to battle the fire. I got to know. Here's my promise. Here, here's the promise I stand on. I, mean, I say it today. I, I stand on this. I, outside of here, you seed to the soil. I stand on that for, my, for when I give. This is what you said. This is what you said, but I, I stand on this because I understand this, because I understand what he put me up again. And he would do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think according to the power that working within you. That's my promise that I stand on. When I meet, when I meet up against the challenge, because you said you'll do it singly abundantly. My thoughts ain't it. Matter of fact, if I can think it, it, it's too small. You believe in here. You got to have something you believe in for. Hear me, it ain't faith in my faith. It's faith in God. So you see, repentance from dead works and faith towards God. Stop believing in your faith and put your faith in his faith. I would say if you have the God kind of faith. Yes, yes. My God, he did it before. The song said he'll do it again. How many got a testimony that he did it before? And every now and then you got to hang around, you got to hang around other people who done did something before. Or bring somebody up with you. We were looking at this text, we had Paul about Benaiah. We were talking through the text and we understood it. Then we said, you know what? Here's the reason why Benaiah was so tough. He was so tough. Because he hung around other lion killers. I know y'all looking for something deep, but that ain't deep. You just sometimes got to hang around other lion killers. You got to hang around other people of faith that's speaking you up. That'll, that, that get what? That won't gossip when you get on the phone. That'll listen, that'll let you vent, but tell you, no, nah, this ain't what God, this is what God said. Let's go. I'm going to let you vent. You got two minutes going to get all this out right now. But now, thus said the Lord. The Lord said he will uphold you by his right hand. So your Baba Naya went down into the pit on a snowy day. Would it tell me what I did? He chased the lion. And he would have so much faith. I want enough room. I like room when I have to fight a little bit. Just in case. He said, I'm going to go down in the pit with him. Close quarters. On a snowy day. I'm going to let you know how bad I am. I'm coming here after you. But then we'll talk about it. Well, who are the other lion killers? I remember David saying when he went to go fight Goliath. <laughs> he said, you ain't but a boy, but what David said? He said, hey, when the bar came. Uh-oh, here go David's resume. But when the lion came. Lion killers, no other lion killers. I rock with you in a lion killer, but I like to rock with lion killers. My faith that big. Say, he who keeps his mind on you, you'll keep him in perfect peace. Yes, yes. Get your word, saints of God. Get your word and stand on it. All hell can be breaking loose around you right now. Get your word and stand on it. You get what? And Hebrews 11 and said, guess what? Some of these people didn't see it, but he said, well, they got, they listed in the, in the, in the, in the, in the hall of, the faith hall of fame. 
It said that the world was not even worthy of these people. Say some of them end up being eaten by a lion. Some of them end up being what? He said, but guess what he said? They kept their faith. Say, when I return, will I find faith? Let me tell you, so sometimes you'll go through something just for other people. I'm finna do this altar call. You'll go through just for other people. I got saved and lost my job. Lost it. But I stood. I stood there. And because I stood there, I stand today. You cry when you had to cry, but you get up and you say, if God be for me, who can be against me? You talk to who you need to talk to, but you get up and say, I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loved me. Lord, I ain't got everything I want, but the Bible say, he who freely gave his own son. Who did, who did not spout? His own song for you. How would he not freely give me all things that pertain to the kingdom? You stand on the word, but you got to get in the word to stand on the word. Lord, I'm walking off. I don't know. I just hear you tell me to walk off. So I ain't talking about presumption. I'm talking about when you get a word from him. Some of us are walking out of presumption, but I'm talking about when you get a show enough word from God. Stand to your feet.